And join me Monday to Thursday from 9 to 11 for the feistiest and most fun news debate on TV where free speech reigns. I'll bring you a sharp take on the day's biggest stories, bombshell newsmaker interviews and A-list guests. And I guarantee you no spin, no bias, no censorship and no reason to go to bed. That's Dan Wharton tonight, Monday to Thursdays from 9 on GB News. Here's a question. Would you like to be informed and entertained in equal measure? Then you come to the right place. Headliners with me, Mark Dolan, and two of my favorite comedians, Sajida Kershi and that other guy. I'll see you after the headlines. Thank you. Apologies about that. Uh, my name's Miranda Shunker and I'm in the GB newsroom. A US military aircraft with four people on board has crashed in northern Norway. The country's Joint Rescue Coordination Centre confirmed the Marine Corps aircraft was taking part in a NATO military exercise when it was reported missing this evening. A rescue helicopter found it after tracking an emergency signal but was unable to land due to poor weather conditions. Police and rescue services are now on their way by land but the status of the crew is not yet known. Britain's chief of defence intelligence warns Russia is turning to the reckless and indiscriminate use of firepower, which will inevitably lead to more civilian casualties. Lieutenant General Sir Jim Hockenhall said the Kremlin has been forced to switch tactics as its advance in Ukraine has stalled. However, the Russian Defence Ministry claims it is tightening the noose around Mariupol and that fighting had reached the centre. Officials have estimated 80% of the city's homes have been damaged. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky says hundreds of civilians may still be buried in the rubble following Wednesday's airstrike on a theatre. Rescue work is underway at the site of the bombing by the occupiers of the theatre, where Mariupol residents hid from shelling, using it as a shelter. It's known that as of now, more than 130 people have been rescued, but hundreds of Mariupol residents are still under the debris. Despite the shelling, despite all the difficulties, we will continue rescue work. President Joe Biden has told his Chinese counterpart Xi Jinping that China faces consequences if it offers materials to support in its Ukraine war. The comment was made during a video call between the two leaders, which lasted just under two hours. According to Chinese state media, President Xi said NATO should hold talks with Russia to resolve the factors behind the conflict. The business secretary has questioned the legality of P&O Ferry's decision to sack 800 staff. In a letter to the chairman, Kwasi Kwarteng expressed the government's anger and disappointment that the company appeared not to have followed the necessary processes. It comes as hundreds of protesters demonstrated against the sackings in Dover, Liverpool, Hull and London. They're calling on the government to nationalise P&O Ferries and seize its ships. And the Metropolitan Police has announced it will appeal against a High Court ruling which found it breached the rights of organisers during a vigil for Sarah Everard. In a statement, the force said it's important for policing and the public that we have absolute clarity of what's expected of us in law. Two senior judges upheld a claim by the founders of Reclaim These Streets who'd planned the vigil, finding the Met's decisions in the run-up to the event were not in accordance with the law. Well, on TV, online and DAB Plus Radio, this is GB News. Now it's back to Headliners. Big laughs and big opinions. Welcome to Headliners. I'm Mark Dolan. And joining me with a comedic romp where possible through tomorrow's papers are a woman who radiates love, joy and benevolence, Sajila Kershi, and Leo Kurse, who radiates, um, well, the authorities don't know yet. Hi, Leo. How are you? Hi, Mark. Uh, listen, busy show. Lots to get through. It's Friday night. You should be in the pub. 
I know. We should be out partying. I was on a boat earlier. OK. Uh, in a hostage situation? What, what was the context? It felt like a hostage situation. <laughs> I was doing comedy uh, to raise money for Ukrainian refugees. Oh. And, uh, yeah. We can't say fairer than that. Look at that. Big sense of humour and a big heart as well has our Leo Kurt. Let's take a look at tomorrow's front pages and we'll start with the Daily Mail. William and Kate in tour storm. They're forced to scrap first visit on Caribbean trip after villagers stage protest about colonialism. William and Kate last night cancelled their first big engagement of their Caribbean tour in an extraordinary row over indigenous rights. The royal couple have been due to begin their visit to Belize with a trip to a sustainable cocoa farm tomorrow. But the charm offensive got off to a rocky start when villagers in Indian Creek staged a protest. Ranting Putin's deluded lies at stadium rally is also befalling the front page of the mail. The Daily Telegraph, Biden warns China not to arm Putin in Ukraine. The Guardian, threat of unlimited fine as anger grows over P and O. And of course, they fired scores of their staff unexpectedly. FT weekend, unethical sackings stir P and O storm. The Daily Mirror, Putin and his sick war rally and P and low pay. Anger as cheap workers start on P&O ships a day after 800 staff are sacked. The Times on a Saturday, smokescreen for war crimes. Trust dismisses peace talks as a sham. Biden warns China not to intervene. Putin hails troops as they enter Mariupol. How about the Daily Express? Sickening. Stalin Putin peddles his lies at war rally. And exclusive. Royals will help refugees. The Queen and her family have been so moved by the plight of Ukrainians, they are determined to find innovative ways to give refugees practical support. And finally, the Daily Star. Hot, hot, hot. For the next 10 days, we'll all be feeling toasty. Brits set for 20 degrees centigrade sizzler as spring arrives early. At last, some good news. And those are your front pages. And let's kick off with the front page story in Saturday's Telegraph. China refusing to condemn Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Sajila. Um, well, yeah, this is in the Telegraph. Joe Biden warns China not to send weapons to Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine. Um, so the US threatens Beijing with consequences. Um, but Xi Jinping yeah. refuses to condemn the invasion and instead is blaming uh, America for the conflict. So everyone's blaming everybody else. This is how World War III starts, I guess. Mm. Um, and they had a two-hour conversation on the phone. I don't know what you talk about on the two hours on the phone. But um, in response to, uh, like, you know, uh, Biden saying, don't get involved, don't sell him weapons, uh, <laughs> uh, um, Xi said, he who tied the bell to the tiger must take it off. So I guess two hours of that kind of conversation. I don't know exactly what yeah. that means, but basically if you started it. So he thinks that he's Biden started, which of course he's refusing. And now they're saying, well, don't get involved. But people are going to get involved. They're going to take sides. It's like a marital breakdown. Everyone's going to take sides. Yeah, and President Xi has turned into Eric Cantona. He he's talking a load of nonsense that we can't fully understand. <laughs> yeah, like, hmm, what does that mean? So maybe that's why it took two hours, because he had to keep asking what it meant. Yeah, well, I mean, he who tied the bell to the tiger must take it off. I can only assume that he's angling for a post-politics career playing Mr Miyagi in the West End. <laughs> that must be what's going on there. But China's got a balancing act here. So, I mean, on the one hand, it wants to keep the West happy because the West is a far more lucrative market for Chinese products and services than Russia is. Russia's a tiny... Russia was a tiny economy before the war, so now yeah. it's nothing. You know, b before the war, it was, it was... 14th in the world or something? Yeah, the, the size of Italy. So yeah. uh, so now it'll be an absolute shell of what it was as well. So, uh, but, but on the other hand, uh, it's an opportunity for Xi to get... Uh, for China to get uh, oil and gas. The oil and gas that the West is now refusing from Russia mm. can now go to China and they can get it, they can get it cheaply, which, you know, is great for them. And in February the 4th, they signed a deal for... 100 $118 billion worth of, of Russian oil and gas, which probably gave Putin 
the cojones to say, you know, look, I've got I've got this war chest now. I can I can go and invade Ukraine. And also, China will be wanting uh, Putin to succeed in Ukraine because if he succeeds in Ukraine, that'll galvanize uh, China to to seize Taiwan, which they see as part of China, just as. Putin sees Ukraine as part of Russia. So they can, uh, and Taiwan, of course, is like Ukraine, a democratic country and doesn't want to be part of the larger, uh, larger body. Of and in there. economic terms, far more lucrative than Ukraine. I mean, yep. Taiwan itself is an, only a small island, an economic powerhouse. Yeah, yeah. Although Ukraine. It's a jewel. Ukraine, although it doesn't have a, you know, it's, it's rife with corruption. Uh, it has uh, a wheat. lot of, a lot of wheat and also oil and gas. And also, you know, it's, it's the sort of, uh, the uh, Silk Road, not the Silk Road, yeah. but you know the, the conduit yeah. to Equivalent, yeah. to to Europe. So you're suggesting, reading between the lines, that China approve of this invasion? Would yes. you go that far? Well, yeah. I mean, they're both China and Russia are both uh, authoritarian dictatorships. I mean, China China's more of a you know committee led, but it's, it's certainly a com more of a sort of command economy, yeah. uh, you know, communist regime. So they're you know they're, they're not democracies. Uh, and they both uh, they both are set on expansionism. But haven't we seen some ambivalence or equivocation from China in relation to the uh, to, to the invasion, including that vote in the UN where they abstained? Yeah, and there's there have been a lot. Is that of, just politics? There have been a lot of examples of this. No, I mean I think it's it's fair. I mean because. China wants to take over the world, but it wants to do it in an orderly way. Yeah. Uh, not this you know, mad dash into Ukraine. Putin yeah. thought it was going to be over in a weekend, yes. and now he's just bogged down in this terrible, attritional uh, warfare that's, that's dealing a, a huge toll on, on Russia, not just economically, but they've already lost more soldiers than in the first year of their, their Afghan war. So, you know, this is, this is a terrible war for Russia. Putin's been really humiliated and uh, really shown up by the, by the resolve of the Ukrainian people. And, uh, you know, for all that people say, oh, but Russia's, you know, it's a, it's a done deal, Russia's going to win. It's not, it's really not a done deal. It's really not a done deal. You're making it sound like the next line is going to be, it's anyone's game. <laughs> yeah, um, but exactly I was going right. to say, the EU, EU have said that they've had um, very reliable evidence that China is going to get involved. I'm like, who's who's singing like a canary? Who's snitching? And Where man. are the moles? You know, it's this true. is all getting very like everybody knows what everyone's business is, and or maybe actually, I think maybe people are making up stuff and then creating those what? conflicts. Fake news. Fake news. Can't Who believe knew it? it? Not yeah. on this channel. Never. Definitely not. We'll look at <laughs> a very concerning story, but we'll get more on that as we have it from Saturday's Mirror. We'll stay on Russia and uh, Vladimir Putin, a speech that didn't quite go according to plan, Leo. Yeah, that's right. So Vladimir Putin was giving a speech. He was having a huge rally, obviously, to, to bolster support for himself uh, in the country in the eighth anniversary of the annexation of Crimea, which was actually quite popular in Russia. But he was mid-sentence in his, in his big speech uh, when the, a state broadcast cut away from him to some, I mean, it was patriotic songs. It didn't suddenly start showing, you know, Beavis and Butthead or something like that. But it, you know, it still, you know, prompted confusion in the audience. And was it deliberate? I mean, we, we don't know. I mean, it was just a couple of days ago that a, a state TV producer uh, did that amazing protest, you know, ran behind the, the newsreader with a, with a sign saying, stop the war. Um, so, I mean, in, in his speech, and by the way, I don't know if you saw his face when he was giving the speech, but he's starting to look like Darth Vader when he takes his helmet off. <laughs> you know, he's got that, that pallid. I don't think he's sleeping well. Yeah. I don't think yeah, he's yeah, entirely, yeah. you know, healthy. Uh, but he's, you know, he's obviously trying to put a huge uh, positive spin on the war. And it's quite easy for him because there, it's not like there's other uh, channels, other people on the channel saying no Putin. Uh, so he's speaking in front of 100,000 supporters, supporters at Moscow's uh, stadium. It's, apparently they've been paid. They're paid the equivalent of, uh, so it's 500 rubles, which is currently worth less than £3.50. That's, that's, that's a Tesco meal deal. They're yeah. getting a Tesco <laughs> meal deal to go and support a dictatorship. Uh, although, obviously, I mean, it's, it's Russia, so the meal deals are, pro are probably cheaper. But he's, he's, in his speech, he's hailing it as a, as a huge success. He's not calling it a war, he's calling it a special military operation. Yeah. And it's obviously not. And I think people can, can see through the cracks there. Yeah. I think I guess there's a bit of competition with, um, you know, Ukraine's uh, 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 PM. Like obviously, he was a comedian, and and you know, obviously, in 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 comparison, Putin's kind of died on on his hole, yeah, and um, he's got zero awareness that he's died because he's boasting. It's like you know, it's going really well, it's going mm. really well, and he's having to pay these little you know plants to kind of 
It's just like boy comedians, really, but just playing politics. When have boy Theo? comedians ever paid people oh, in the audience to laugh? Oh, when have they laugh? ever done that to No, me? seriously, I mean, why? why? And burn show, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> but so that yeah, was, yeah. 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 So, so, is that right? You were, you were paid to be an That part of that script. I've oh, never been accredited, but Brendan out there, yeah, start it, telling people. It's now. very <laughs> funny and very convincing. So you complain that what you said is, is racist or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. That whole thing. But what I'm saying is that this, this, this is kind of effective what you're trying to do. It's like copy the comedian. Ukrainian comedian. Was, yeah. was he video of him before? Interesting listening to, um, yeah, um, I, I saw some footage, but clearly a very charismatic guy. And, uh, but don't get any ideas, Leo. <laughs> I ran, I ran for election last year. Very good point. Yeah, I didn't do quite as well as Zelensky. Never seen him, but first minister, Leo. <laughs> that doesn't save the union, nothing will. <laughs> but uh, it's interesting, isn't it, that listening to Konstantin Kissin, mm -hmm. brilliant podcast host and comedian, and he was saying that as far as he can judge, the Russian people largely support this invasion, something not reported, reported widely here in the West, mm. that, that there is popular support for what's happening, even however horrific we find it. Mm. Do, you, do you understand that to be the case, Leo? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how, how deep... I mean, they don't have opinion polls ...really today. is. I mean, because in Russia, it's not as if it's socially acceptable to come out and speak, you know, to go against the, the sort of jingoistic tone of the, of the government. So I'm not sure if they really support Putin or if they're just going along with it because that's the easier thing to do, much as people go along with woke, woke uh, beliefs in, in our society. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ha the extent to which the Russian public support this invasion might be critical to the outcome, Sajila. Yeah, I think so. And I think we need to find out why they're supporting it rather than just sort of judge like they're following or not yeah. find out. I'd like to know why, you know, why they, because maybe there's information that we don't know. You know, remember, there is always propaganda, irrespective of who you think the good boys yeah. and bad boys. But, yeah. you know, war never brings out the best in people. Yeah, too right. Uh, well, look, let's uh, move to a really tough story, Sajila, and this is the murder of Sarah Everard's oh, and gosh. a new development for, for Wayne Cousins, who, who yeah. appallingly killed her. Um, there's been a few stories today that's made me really angry. This is one of them. So Wayne uh, Cousins, uh, uh, Sarah Everard's killer, has been charged with indecent exposure. There's four, uh, four counts of indecent exposure, which took place last year between um, January and February. One of them uh, took place six days before she was, um, uh, before Sarah was kidnapped and murdered. And for anybody uh, who doesn't remember the story, he basically, um, uh, 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 you know, kind of got her into his car with a fake uh, arrest warrant, um, took, drove her 80 miles to Kent, and there um, he used his um, uh, belt, um, the, 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 the um, uh, what is it called, the police issue belt to strangle her and killed and, and raped her. Mm. It's absolutely horrific. It is the Met at its worst in the last few years. Yeah. I mean, this, yeah. these, these stories, I mean, they're not, they're not small stories. These are big stories well, this, that come this out. This wasn't Met policy. Yeah. I mean, this was one man. One, yeah, was... I know it's one man, but what I'm saying is it's, it's it, the, the Met culture. has been riddled with so many, like, um, uh, you know, of these, like, horrific stories that are happening with the Met sort of association. Um, and the fact that this happened under a female commissioner as well, Chrissy De Dick, and I, I, I just, it, it kind of beggars belief, really. But, um, yeah, so there, there have been these incidents, and it, you have to ask yourself, like, um, why wasn't this picked up sooner yeah. to save, save Sarah's life? You know, four um, and incidents. He, I mean, four, that's, four. you know, one... Yeah, we, we must... OK, so there's four, and I know that you're supposed to say allegedly. We don't know if there were others. You know, this, yeah. this, he didn't yeah, just yeah, suddenly yeah. get up and think, well, well today... four is a lot. Four I mean, is I a thought, lot, I yeah. thought one was enough of, yeah. of a warning sign. Yeah. I mean, because one of them was in a, in a McDonald's, I believe. Um, so... What, was he not getting... I, 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 I'm not, I, can't, I can't even find anything, you know, this just, this just makes me so angry yeah. that it's... It, and I, there was a culture of this there, there misogyny. There is a culture, but also, the, why wasn't he this picked up before? Yeah. You know, why? And I think um, I think that it's it's good that the laws are changing to, like, protect women online. The, 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 I mean, what it is is that when I, I spoke to a, a, um, a friend today, only today, who worked for the Met Police, and he said that, um, it, you know, racism was really rife. He had to leave because he couldn't get uh, promoted. But... Um, that there was a time when you, the public, used to fear and respect the uniform 
And now it's it's just made a mockery because women do not feel so. I don't feel so. Having said that, I've dealt with two lovely local Surrey police, well done Surrey police, uh, in the last couple of days, mm. who were amazing, brilliant. So they can't all be tied with the same brush. But the Met Police itself has been, you know, it's it's it's, it's but, been a lot of. I mean, it's a huge force. And uh, I mean, I think after the McPherson report and everything, they really did uh, they really did improve uh, their working practices. Uh, but it's it's a huge force. So I mean, there's going to be individuals, you know, doing terrible things occasionally when you've got that many people. Um, and I think you know this this culture that people talk about, this culture of misogyny and stuff like that, and people pulling out WhatsApp messages. I don't think you really judge it on that. It's not. Uh, I mean, I think if we were judged on what we said on WhatsApp, we'd all. Be considered, I, I agree uh, with that, um, uh, Leo. But um, in this instance, and there are many other cases, it's not about WhatsApp. It's 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 about there is something drastically wrong that needs to be addressed. Um, personally, I think Chris Eda should have resigned a lot sooner. Um, you know, there is something wrong that's gone toxic. And it's but the sort resolved. of remarks that Cousins was making, which were considered banter within the force, or yeah, considered they, acceptable, or not reported. And not reported or just it's just seen as acceptable and actually i get what you're saying because let's face it in car journeys you know comedians have the darkest humor we really do we, we it's gallows humor we we've heard everything seen okay. everything and, and comedians do some terrible there have been some yeah, we terrible do. comedians but at the end of the day we are comedians yeah first five years of my career <laughs> <laughs> i say that first 15 according to some we're, we're on year four now guys. <laughs> yeah just a bit uh listen i can see you in a sailor's uniform Leo. <laughs> Is this linked to your previous no, story? Nothing to do with the story. It's just something that occurred to me earlier today. Right. When I, thought, I, was... I thought this was just your serial killer fantasy. Me <laughs> a little, dressed little, in a little bit of that. In a, in a well in, in the basement of your house. Well, look, there might be some job, jobs going at PO. So PO, there are low, quite lowly paid jobs, apparently. So uh, PO Ferries, this is this is a big story yesterday. They just fired. They fired all their staff, 800 staff. Uh, by text and by uh, video conferencing, as if you know Zoom calls weren't awkward enough already. Uh, and mm. now the business secretary, Quasi Quarting, has warned PO that they uh, could face an unlimited fine um, is found to, if, if the sacking is found to have breached the law. Um, so in his letter, Quarting said, failure to give sufficient notice of large scale redundancies uh, to, the, to the government is a criminal offence and can lead to an, to an unlimited fine. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it just seems like terrible business practice. I mean, uh, if, their, if their profit margins aren't strong enough to support you know, this number of workers, uh, there's other ways that you can restructure a company to sack everybody and then replace them with agency staff. When it's ferries, when I mean, we remember the Zabruger tragedy, yeah. you know, with ferries, there's a safety issue. So you can't just have, you know, poorly trained, poorly committed agency staff. Not that I'm saying that agency staff are all like that, but, you know, if, you, if you've got agency staff coming in and doing the job for more cheaply, I don't think that's a good solution. It's also very sad for the culture of the company because lots of people have been giving decades worth of service to yeah. PO, sometimes multi-generational. Yeah, Whole yeah. families invested in this in this mm -hmm. cause. Yeah, and now they won't have the, the smell of the diesel from the car deck and the, the fruit yeah. machines ringing in their ears. It's, it's, it's the end of an era. No, oh, you're, you're, uh, you're selling it to me now. Carry on cruising. <laughs> uh, another really tough story. Sorry, Sajila, we're saddled right. you with That's some fine. awful material tonight. But a teenage girl who was strip searched at her school is to take legal action. Um, yeah, another... A horrible story, sadly, the Met Police involved again. Um, so uh, if anyone's read this story or not, no, it's a, a black girl uh, was strip searched uh, at school uh, to uh, if she's going to sue the Met Police as a result of it, just to, if she's, if she's referred to as Child Q, 15 years old. Um, they smelt marijuana on her, so they strip searched her. Two female officers from the Met searched her, strip searched her. They made her remove her sanitary towel, which is the most horrific part of this um, as a 15 year old girl. And um, it's like if you are two women who are doing this, did you not at the time think perhaps this is wrong? She's a child. And they talk a lot about adultification of, of, of black youth, like seeing them as older than they actually mm -hmm. are. But this is a school and they're, you know, she's 15. And I was strip searched once at um, the airport and it was 
horrific. It was awful. I can't believe that. And, um, yeah, I know. I mean, uh, I, admittedly, I was a bit, it's because I was being a bit of a gobby, gobby so so. Well, gobby. well, well. <laughs> there we get to the bottom of the story. <laughs> well, These innocent no, angels no. being strip searched no, for I'm no sorry. reason. I said, all I said was what, randomly being searched when there was all these these people of colour, like, you know, being mm -hmm. randomly searched. Yeah. And then um, then they put the metal detector around around my booby doos and, uh, <laughs> and and then and then it, it beeped and and, oh. and then she did it again. And I, and I was like, everyone's around me and I was going, uh, uh, you know, under why bra much? Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> and then she said, I'm not happy with your answer. We need to go to the other room. Like and I was like, just frog march into and then and strip searched. And then I took the, you know, it's like, well, look, see the why and, the, and, and yeah. still. But it left me feeling really you know, violated. That's it was, bad. It was, it was just like... There, there, there might be a way to do it, and that wasn't it. No, and I'm an adult, so imagine a 15-year-old girl yeah. who won't have long before started a period is made to do this, and just because of marijuana, we're not even talking about hard drugs here, it's a child, so yeah, awful. I don't know if you, what you've got to no. say about this, but yeah. well, I don't know. I, I was a you criminal. pay you pay for that kind of thing, don't you? Oh. <laughs> Let's be yeah. honest. I like the violation. Some of there's us, a, uh, but... there's a little place in Glasgow that you, you <laughs> frequent. There's a big place. Uh, it's called Glasgow. <laughs> uh, um, you know, when I worked with the police, I, I was a criminal intelligence analyst. There were plenty of fifteen-year-olds committing horrific crimes, and you know, in this case, I agree. You know, it's the smell of marijuana. It doesn't seem like a, a big deal. Uh, but, you know, why do you think the police are, are in the school? They're not there to uh, persecute the children. They're there to keep the children safe. And, you know, honestly, some of the, some of the gang crime that goes on in London is oh, okay. there absolutely is, There horrific. is absolutely zero justification for a 15-year-old girl to have her sanitary towel removed, strip searched in a school property, and I hope she wins her case suing the Met Police and suing her school. Well, I think the ramifications could be that the police, as we've seen in, in America with Portland and you know other areas where because of Black Lives Matter, the police have just backed off and not gone in and not dealt with incidents, and as a result, violent crime is skyrocketing. Murders are skyrocketing. This is pop. So, we're talking about marijuana. We're yeah, talking about but I mean, we're talking about a wider approach to crime. Well, it's all about opinions. Were the police just doing their job or was this, frankly, a crime? Um, well, uh, this show is all about opinions. We'll get to more of those in the next section of the show. We'll be discussing transgender athletes, a fake surrender video in Ukraine, and a female jockey makes history. See you in two. GB News is the UK's home of discussion and debate from all perspectives. To stay up to date on the latest stories, make sure that you subscribe to the GB News channel right here on YouTube. You can watch us live 24-7 across the whole world. You can also check out exclusive content and catch up on previous episodes of your favourite shows. Every day, we ask the questions that you ask. So why not add your voice to the conversation in the comments section? Don't forget to subscribe. We are GB News, Britain's news channel. Every night at 11 on GB News, we bring you the next day's stories the day before. It's basically like time travel. If it's a big story, we'll cover it, guaranteed. But we'll also have some fun along the way. Big opinions, big laughs. Sometimes big hair. This is Headliners, Headliners the paper review show that won't send you to sleep like the others will. 11 p.m., seven nights a week. Join us. Hello there, I'm Eamon Holmes. And I'm Isabel Webster. And we hope you can join us for... Breakfast with Eamon. And Isabel. You make me laugh out loud, belly laugh. Is that important first thing in the morning? Yeah, absolutely. And there's me trying to be deadly serious. <laughs> News is a serious business. Yeah, I have to rein you in sometimes. Well, it doesn't stop us laughing at it. It doesn't stop us having an opinion on what's going on. Yeah. And it certainly will not stop us reflecting what you think. Weekdays from six to half past nine on GB News. I'm Dan Wooten. Join me Monday to Thursday from 9 to 11 for the feistiest and most fun news debate on TV where free speech reigns. I'll bring you a sharp take on the day's biggest stories, bombshell newsmaker interviews and A-list guests. And I guarantee you no spin, no bias, no censorship and no reason to go to bed. That's Dan Wooten tonight, Monday to Thursdays from 9 on GB News.
Welcome back to Headliners. I'm Mark Dolan with Sajila Kershi and Leo Kirst looking at tomorrow's papers. Saturday's Times reports that Ofcom, who are the regulatory body of British broadcasting, have intervened to take away RT's broadcasting license. Leo, what is RT? So RT is Russia Today. So it's Russian state-funded propaganda masquerading as news. Uh, unlike GB News, which you can trust all the way to the bank. Absolutely. Um, although, ironically, I've done work for Russia Today, so I did get money from them and I took it to the bank. But so uh, I won't, did, I won't did you feel anymore. Did you feel pressurised to have a certain opinion? Uh, no, actually, because as my understanding is, Russia Today is there to sort of destabilise the West and sow fake news that undermines Western institutions. Um, but, I mean, 180 quid's 180 quid. But, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the piece I wrote for them was actually, uh, was actually reinforcing uh, Western liberal de democracy. I was surprised mm. they, they ran it. Uh, it might be why uh, it's not so popular anymore. But it's good that Ofcom have taken a break from uh, pouring over what we say on GB News uh, for any naughty <laughs> well, words. Well, I've always found them to be uh, very fair. What would you say about the decision to withdraw their licence to broadcast in the UK? But people can't watch RT now. Is that the right thing? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a bit of a symbolic move because uh, the EU has already banned uh, Russia Today across the EU. So it's, it's already, I, I don't think you can actually watch it here anymore. It's been taken off YouTube and everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, it's, I think it's a good idea. I mean, Russia, Russia commits the most horrific propagandist and, and also meddles in the West in so many ways and in elections with bot farms and all these things to, to try and, you know, sow dissent. Even all the wokeism, all these crazy woke ideas. Uh, there, there are people who say that was, that was sown in the 80s in uh, universities, you know, telling all these radical left-wing liberals, you know, all these ideas to make them hate the West and sow these ideas in young people's minds. And that seems to be working. You know, the, the, the sort of damage to the West seems to be coming from within, from within our institutions and our universities. But how would the Russians have infiltrated American universities where things like critical race theory began? It was a man in a moustache. <laughs> and he right. <laughs> uh, went into the university. And, With a Russian uh, accent. I'm not sure. Somebody did show me a video where somebody explained it, but you can say that about anything. I know. That's, it's, it's, I'll be honest, it sounds a bit conspiracy theory, but I'm going to take a total curveball in this, right? Oh, yeah. So, Ofcam are, 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 are like, you know, this is Ofcam like deciding what to do this. Can I just ask Ofcam? This is, this is like, and yet we had shows like um, Men and Motors with naked female wrestling and naked, like, weather forecast. What's wrong? I do uh, miss that, that channel. And that was never planned. Oh. Huh? Do you remember what? this? Yes, no, yes. of course, that's right. Uh, I think that there have been lots of quite adult channels that continue it's, to It's broadcast. almost like perhaps perhaps I smelt something and I was I imagined that happened on our TV screens. But that's entertainment. Whereas yes, I was just this, trying, to, trying to throw in a light-hearted curveball. We're talking, about, we're talking about propaganda that favours a nefarious regime that murders civilians. What Not about somebody... this, though, Sajila? What about the idea that we are intelligent, sovereign human beings and we can be trusted to watch a I, partisan channel? I agree. I'm not with you on this. I think we shouldn't ban it. I, I want to see it. You know, I want to improve my Russian. And, and maybe hear the lies that they're saying and address them properly. Yeah, exactly. We'll expose them to the to truth. Everything. Well, one bad ramification is that Western channels are now being banned in Russia, which means, uh, you know, Russians are getting less and less of a chance to see the alternative to Putin's propaganda. Yeah, but then it, go, then it goes back to, like, you did this, we're going to do that. We're going to do... Why, why can't we just be us? Why do we have to follow because, suit? Because they banned us, that we have to ban them. It's good that no, we see what they're we're ba We're banning it because they invaded Ukraine and started killing yeah, know, lots of people. You, and it's you know, an it's assault like, on Western let's liberal ban democracy. The mustard, let's ban you know, it's like, it, 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 I don't think it's productive. Do you think we win a war by not doing anything? No, no, but if you have their channel, at least we get to see what propaganda they're doing. And, and we could watch enemy, it you know and call it out enemy. as ridiculous yeah. and do jokes about it on GB well, News. I hate to, I hate to uh, you know, you burst know your bubble, but I've watched Russia Today and it's awful. So we're not missing much. Unless there you want to see George Galloway talking for three hours. <laughs> no comment. Uh, let's have a look at a really tough story in Saturday's Times next, Sajila. And this is about an alleged sexual assault in a hospital. OK, uh, if, so... If that happened, I'm sure that the yeah. person was immediately investigated. 
Well, um, let's just get what the... What the what, uh, OK, so in the hospital told a police patient that who was not raped because alleged attacker was transgender. So this is what happened. Um, the rape victim what, was told they were not raped. Yeah, they were not raped. They were not raped because they couldn't have been raped because it, it, there, were, there were no men on the ward. There was just a transgender. And during the year that she basically was effectively gaslighted by the hospital, um, she had a, 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 a nervous breakdown because she was being disbelieved about being raped in hospital. In such an, it was such an appalling, shocking thing. And I've been in hospital last year. You are the most vulnerable in hospital. Um, and, uh, you know, so to make her think that she was imagining it in some way. And it took a year for them to admit that, yes, there was a man. But they have this policy... Whoa, 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 that's transphobic. Huh? No, a transgender were, no woman. that's what they said. That's, I'm not saying that. They said, that's what they said, that they, it took them a year to say there was a man. So a Annex, B, Annex B is what they've, they've got a... a uh, a, um, uh, a result called Annex B, which is basically a hospital trust to inform the ward sisters and nurses that if there's a male uh, as a trans person in a female ward and a female patient or anyone complains, they must be told that this is not true. So if there's no male there. That's what that's what their their rule is. So they're saying that change this. And there's a woman called uh, Lady. There's always a Lady Lardy. Lady Nicholson's proposals were opposed by someone called Lord Etherton and who argued that the current policy was entirely appropriate and consistent with the Anti-Discrimination Law and the Equality Act. Now, the thing is, what's, what's important here is not whether it was trans or not, it's the fact that they tried to say that she wasn't raped, that they gaslit her by yeah. saying that, that this didn't happen to you, that couldn't have happened to you because there were no men on the ward. And a legal definition of rape means that it can only be carried out by a physically intact man, which means they may have been trans, but they weren't post-op, they were pre-op and so still able to rape. And this woman went through hell for a year, yeah, a year and a, a half, year. And that's being the gaslit reality of and the told fear. that she hadn't been raped. Can you imagine anything worse? Well, this, I mean, when people say, you know, what damage can being woke do? Walk, being woke is just about being nice to people and, you know, helping, you know, minorities and stuff. And uh, no, uh, as we can see here, uh, the fear of appearing transphobic and the, and the desire to include transgender people resulted in a woman being told she hadn't been raped which is awful for a, for a whole year. In Rotherham, the fear of looking racist meant that grooming gangs went undisturbed, went, you know, unstopped by authorities for decades. You know, be it, wokeism can really drive horrific behaviour. But I think if you know the facts, like if I was in hospital and somebody said, oh, you know, there's a, there's a trans woman next to you, I don't, I'd have no problem with that because I know that there's a trans woman. It's the fact that no, you're not told, you're not allowed to know. And I don't know if that's right or wrong. And I, and I have to say, there's, that, there's this confusion. There's this part of me that's thinking, no, I really want to... Well, I think rights, if it's a mixed you know? ward, that's fine. I think if it's a female-only ward, then there shouldn't be trans women in there, but... It's a fe yeah, female only it's board, and you know. What do you think? I think well, you're you're the female. I'm the female. I I I, I, would feel, I didn't I didn't feel comfortable even using the, the there's a male ward ne right next to us because obviously yeah. were, you know it, it was mad last year at the hospitals and I just using their bathrooms made me feel uncomfortable mm. because you know I just wanted my own privacy I and mean, you've got a gown on that your back's bare and you know you don't you want you so you female only to... space is important it, to you. It is, it's it a it premium. Is important. It is important for many reasons. I mean I know we have like mixed toilets here. I don't. And, and I don't think I don't think if you're not a woman and you haven't been through a certain life that you can't you can understand why that feels threatening to you. And I have to say, it is not about trans. It's about uh, this is trans. It's, it's about, it's about I'm penis. reporting you. I'm it's reporting about you. It's about having you know, and that is what is you know fundamentally what frightens a woman. And that is you know it says here what what rape is is the definition is it can only be carried out by someone one who's got physically intact as a man, meaning that they still have... Well, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's a, a devastating story and one that will continue to spark the yeah. trans debate, which just spills over into sport, doesn't it? Yes, Let's have a look does. at the Telegraph. We continue with the trans debate. And, uh, I mean, it's interesting what you've said, because you're one of the nicest people I know. I know, you know, that's uh, not a pool of particularly nice oh. people, but you're, you know, you're such a nice person. But what you've said... Oh, they want us to you, fight. <laughs> what you've said would get you fired from a I, lot of institutions. Well, it's interesting you it's, say that because I've just been cancelled by a gig for no reason at all. Oh, uh, <laughs> they, they could see it in the future. They I could see your No, 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 not in the future. Right. It's stuff I've already said. Stuff Their I've loss said. is our gain. Do you know what it was you might have said? I don't, I think it, I, uh, maybe because I put W, uh, sorry, XX on my, on my um, Twitter profile. It might be because I've already made comments on, on this show. I don't know. It was just, it's really weird. It's really weird and the thing had sold sold out, but suddenly it's cancelled and... They, the, um, they booked me instead. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> he identifies, he identifies as a woman, don't you? Yeah. <laughs>
Um, half the time. <laughs> so yeah, we've got another trans story here in the, in the Telegraph. So American swimming is facing fresh criticism after Leah Thomas, the sport's most high profile transgender athlete, made history by winning a prestigious title in Atlanta on Thursday night and beat a Tokyo Olympic medalist into third. Uh, so I, I don't know if we've got a picture of the, uh, the podium when they're all standing on the podium. But then we, there we go. There's, uh, so Leah Thomas is there on the left, um, looking quite substantially larger. I know she's on a podium, but still, uh, you can see the, the size and then the other, the second and it's third. It's an unfortunate photograph, isn't it? And, that's, and yeah, that's not, there's a better photograph when they're on, where they're on the podium. But as a piece looks, of propaganda. Yeah, but the, the photograph where they're on instead of some of them clustered over there. Uh, it really looks like the South Park episode with uh, Macho Man Randy yeah. Savage where he wins Strongest Woman. But uh, yeah, Sharon Davies, who's a former British Olympic medalist, has, uh, has come out and uh, called the result uh, an injustice because uh, Leah Thomas, obviously, you know, if you go through male puberty, you get larger, uh, larger skeleton, greater bone density, stronger muscles and, you know, things like that. So it, you get certain advantages. Even though you'd think the, you know, the appendage would actually cause some drag in the water and maybe slow you down a bit, it doesn't offset the other advantages. Yeah. And yet, interestingly enough, when I see that photo, I feel a bit sorry for her because the others are on the other side and I don't like anyone feeling excluded. I'm like, why is she on her own? I mean, that looks a bit mean. That looks like... Well, she could have just not competed in a female I know, sport. I know, mean, like, <laughs> you know, I can, I, can see, I can see why she'd want to compete. You know, she's a woman. She wants to compete. However, we have got to create another category, just like we, you know, we, we obviously, you know, disability allowed you to go in, into the Paralympics. Yeah. Well, I think we need another category. How about we do away with gendered categories altogether, <laughs> and women can compete <laughs> on an equal level playing field? Well, that's not going to happen because you know that the, the bodies are we're just you know made differently, and that's the whole argument in this, in this whole thing. Well, there you go. Yeah. Not as good. On to another story now <laughs> about President Zelensky, who has been given the deep fake treatment. This is in Saturday's Times, Leo. Oh, yes. Yeah. So uh, this is a video of President Zelensky. I don't know if you've seen the video, but it looks ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, for a deep fake, it's neither deep. Uh, it's definitely fake, but it's, it's not convincing in any way. It looks like it was done on a, you know, a Game Boy in 1991. Um, so it's, it's a video of Zelensky. He's calling on his troops to lay down their arms and surrender to Russian forces. So even if it was convincing, nobody would believe it. Um, and it, it was spotted immediately, immediately. So his body in the video doesn't move at all. And his accent is wrong. And also his lip sync is out of uh, sync with what he's saying. So here, here it is. Oh, we're not going to see it move. But trust it's, me, that looked like a it's, postage stamp. It's very scary technology, though, isn't it? When it's, when it's done if, right, If they get scary. it right. Yeah, it's actually more scary that in Russia they think they can get away with, uh, with deep fakes like that. Mm -hmm. I've seen other deep fakes that are convincing. There's one of Obama that's, that's really good. And somebody did one of, uh, of Putin that was, that was quite convincing. But the way they did this one, um, and I've always wondered what happened to the Al-Qaeda, you know, the, the cinematographers in the, you know, in the caves. Um, mm. and, and I guess they've... You know, it's a bit of a job, isn't it? It's work. It's well, work. it's very true, yeah. by the way. Exactly. Get on, get on that old uh, technology, that software, and uh, recreate your own reality. Um, lots more to come in the final part of the show. We've saved our best till last. We'll be back with more of Saturday's top news stories, including the far-right radicalisation of the middle class, children threatened with detention for failing to donate to Red Nose Day, <laughs> and why people from Finland are so happy. Find out why after this. GB News is the UK's home of discussion and debate from all perspectives. To stay up to date on the latest stories, make sure that you subscribe to the GB News channel right here on YouTube. You can watch us live 24-7 across the whole world. You can also check out exclusive content and catch up on previous episodes of your favourite shows. Every day, we ask the questions that you ask. So why not add your voice to the conversation in the comments section? Don't forget to subscribe. We are GB News, Britain's news channel. Every night at 11 on GB News, we bring you the next day's stories the day before. It's basically like time travel. If it's a big story, we'll cover it, guaranteed. But we'll also have some fun along the way. Big opinions, big laughs. Sometimes big hair. This is Headliners, Headliners the paper review show that won't send you to sleep like the others will. 11 p.m., seven nights a week. Join us.
Hello there, I'm Eamon Holmes. And I'm Isabel Webster. And we hope you can join us for... Breakfast with Eamon. And Isabel. You make me laugh out loud, belly laugh. Is that important first thing in the morning? Yeah, absolutely. And there's me trying to be deadly serious. <laughs> News is a serious business. Yeah, I have to rein you in sometimes. Well, it doesn't stop us laughing at it. It doesn't stop us having an opinion on what's going on. Yeah. And it certainly will not stop us reflecting what you think. Weekdays from 6 to half past 9 on GB News. I'm Dan Wilson. Join me Monday to Thursday from 9 to 11 for the feistiest and most fun news debate on TV where free speech reigns. I'll bring you a sharp take on the day's biggest stories, bombshell newsmaker interviews and A-list guests. And I guarantee you no spin, no bias, no censorship and no reason to go to bed. That's Dan Wilson tonight, Monday to Thursdays from 9 on GB News. Welcome back to Headliners with me, Mark Dolan. I'm joined tonight by the fabulous comedic double bill of Sajila Kershi and Leo Kurse. On to Saturday's Express, Sajila, and good news for a jockey at the Cheltenham Gold Cup. Yes, um, Rachel Blackmore has become the first female jockey to win the famous Cheltenham Gold Cup. Um, I can't watch the Cheltenham. I mean, it's great. She's the first woman, right? Uh, there are 22 fences. Did you know this, that they have to Amazing. jump the horses? And I cannot watch it because every time I watch it, my but cheeks clench very, very tightly. It's just too stressy for me to watch that. What about a, you? I get that with Emmerdale, by the way. <laughs> do you, Emmerdale? Yeah. That's, that's, too a, that's a kegel. That's a kegel. <laughs> if you do enough of them, you, uh, I'm not sure what it does, actually, but oh. I think it's good for you. Is that well, right? Look, ladies, let's start watching the Cheltenham. Well, look, that's, that's a great win for Rachel Blackmore. Congratulations to her. Uh, let's move on to our next story. In Saturday's Sun, well, let's stick with you, Sajila, on this. An odd way to encourage children to give their pocket money to charity. Uh, well, we used to call it Mufti Day, my son's day, when he was young. So school threatens kids with detention if they don't donate to Red Nose Day, leaving parents outraged. Mm. So the school basically just said uh, they needed a one-pound donation uh, uh, to, uh, you know, to not to wear your own clothes mm. and threatened detention. And, um, and, and then they had to apologise and say no. Um, I think it's a bit harsh. I think that being forced yeah. to do something good yeah. or honourable yeah. removes its value. I mean, I've always thought that about the poppy appeal. I yeah. wear my poppy with pride, but if you don't wear one, you get sort of attacked. Yeah. And yeah. it's just like, well, no, it has no meaning if you have to do it. No. And we've also seen, haven't we, just going back to Russia, that there have been sports stars who have been told they can't participate in certain tournaments if they don't condemn Vladimir Putin. Mm, yeah. I mean, I know it's not quite on that scale, but can we just stop coercing people to do things all the time? Yeah. It feels yeah. like the age of coercion. Just, yeah. just, let them, just let them come out with their pro-Putin comments and then we won't let them compete. And we've got them. There you go. <laughs> yeah. But don't you think this is a bit much, the enforced donation to Red Nose Day? Yeah, no, this is this is ridiculous. I mean, it should be. Uh, I mean, I, I think it's a misworded email rather than uh, rather than anything well, else. Yeah, it was a bit tough, wasn't it? What's it? It didn't actually say detention. What did they call it? Uh, donation. Yeah. Uh, d d d um, no, hang on. What did they call it? I can't remember. So I just think I'd go as far as to say I just think we're in the grip of a mandate culture now. Everything since the pandemic, everything's being mandated and forced on yeah. us. You know, things used to be discretionary, didn't they? Yeah, kids rebel. Give me the pound. Yeah, yeah wear, your, wear your uniform and don't pay it. <laughs> How about Saturday's Mail? The far right are trying to recruit from an unlikely source the middle classes, Leo. Yeah, this is in the Independent as well. So middle class educated young white men, such as me and Mark, are increasingly being <laughs> drawn like into right wing, extreme right wing terrorism by uh -oh. radicals who uh, exploit their interest in gaming, according to the national head of counter terrorism. I shouldn't laugh, probably. But Matt Dukes, I mean, the thing is, when people say extreme far right, it's, uh, everything's extreme far right these days. The, yeah. this, the Green Party in Scotland, who are in, are in, the, in a coalition with the government, um, the Green Party said uh, that anybody who wants to work in North Sea oil is an extreme far right fascist. And Astonishing. Uh, you know, yeah, this, this whole right wing thing, it's become the new you're racist, hasn't it? Do you know what yeah. I mean? In, in other words, racism is evil, extreme far right is, is, is evil, yeah. but, but yet say, everyone's it's, it's tired with this. The lefty in the middle, the lefty in the middle, uh, it's also the other way, like, you know, the mm. right are always saying about the loony lefties. Yeah. I think it's too divisive. Can I just say, we've probably got a lot more in common than you realise. Bingo. So, you know, that's what this show's a desire, about, kids. A desire for authoritarianism <laughs> seems to be it. 
But yeah, apparently, to, according to Scotland Yard, suspects as young as 13 are sharing illegal material but don't realise they're committing terrorist offences. So they see, you know, some bomb-making handbook or whatever uh, yeah. on the internet, they send it on, and uh, that's, that's a really serious offence if you're caught. Yeah, well, we've all been there. I thought it was Delia Smith. <laughs> I just think gaming is the work of the devil. <laughs> Can't disagree, I've got to say. Now, Cher, speaking of the work of the devil, once sang a song about what would happen if she could turn back time. It looks like it might be possible, Sajila. Uh, which way? I could turn back time. No, you did not see this story. Uh, it's a cracking story. Um, and it's... Uh, it's oh, the anti-antiverse. Yeah, the anti-verse. Yes. It's in the, the annals of yeah, so physics, which might mean it's got that in VHS. Uh, time okay. runs backwards. So time goes backwards. That's great. That means right now, somewhere in a different universe, the anti-universe, I am either being born, graduating, or doing my first gig and dying on my hole. Yeah, this is... not. How can time run backwards? I know. It's it just doesn't make any sense. Time can't run. It's got to go forwards. Just go to New Zealand. Uh, let's move on to our next story, and I love this one. When you think of Finland, you think of reindeer, Nokia, and endless winter. But apparently they're also quite a jolly bunch. Leo, Saturday's Indy, tell me well, more. Well, I think of the Russian invasion, where Russia uh, lost a lot of troops but did seize some territory. But Finland has been crowned the world's happiest country uh, by uh, the World Happiness Report, which so far has just surveyed Finland and hasn't been to anywhere like Thailand or Australia where the sun shines and everybody's happy. So this is the fifth consecutive year Finland has been the world's happiest country. I don't believe this. I've not been there, but like, when you think of this, I've been to Scandinavia and it's, you know, everybody raves about how wonderful Scandinavia is. It's great if you want to pay 18 pounds for a beer. Well, I mean, I live in London. What can I say about that? But apparently it's uh, low crime rates. I guess we don't have that in London. An abundance of natural beauty. Definitely don't have that. An emphasis of community, on community and cooperation. Definitely don't have that. Universal healthcare. We do have that. And few people living in poverty. That's a big eh -eh oh, for I London. Are all thought to contribute to the... But isn't it quite nice living in a rubbish country? Yeah, but you know, what makes me <laughs> angry here is how did we come lower than Iceland? Like, so Iceland's at number three and UK is number 17. Yeah. And uh, but, but, we were even yeah. lower than Nor Norway. But, but one of the point is that this country might not be happy, but that's because we don't want to be happy. Yeah, we like Because we English. like you know, things to be a bit rubbish and we can grumble about it. No, I like things to yeah, be Yeah, what's good. more British than that? <laughs> You're right. In Saturday's uh, Sun. Let's uh, have a look at this. I know you like this story, Leo. A damning investigation into the DVLA. Actually, can I get a word from you on this first, Sajila? Uh, okay. Because the DVLA basically downed tools during the pandemic. Yeah, mm. and they've been very, very naughty because hundreds of them, uh, the staff, went on full pay while managers boasted watching TV in bed and they didn't do their jobs and they got all this money for nothing just to watch telly and just sitting around at home. I am outraged of Surrey. Were they actually expressly told not to do any work? Or were they skivers? The, the, well, I think there was a lot of covid delitis going on during the last mm. couple of years. Like, people just kept using COVID as an excuse to either skive off work or mm. just say that they, you know, weren't well, well enough to go. Um, so I think a little bit of that. But I, I will hand it over to my well-earned colleague because he, he's, he's more excited about this story than I am. I loathe and detest the DVLA. <laughs> I think they're a shaman of, of an organisation. And I think if, if Putin did invade the UK and install his corrupt cronies running our institutions, the DVLA would actually be the one that improved in efficiency and quality of service. I sent a form to the DVA, DVLA to get them to update my address. They lost the form. Then, uh, then because I hadn't updated my address, I couldn't order tax for my car. And then because I hadn't ordered tax for my car, the DVLA stole my car and, uh, and no. stored it in a pound and charged me hundreds and hundreds of pounds, plus a fine, plus all this court stuff. Did you uh, get all that money back? No, I had to pay it all. I mean, but it, it was, was horrific. all their mistakes. Surely. It was all their mistakes. It, yeah. And then a lawyer said, oh, but if you do this and this and this and spend the rest of your life dedicated to, to this, you can get the money back. And I was like, man, I, I just can't, I can't be bothered. That's it's horrific. It's really good that Leo is so forgiving. The, div <laughs> the DVLA are absolute <laughs> scum. One of the They've reason... been shirking the responsibilities. The reason they didn't change my address is because they haven't been doing their jobs. There's backlogs of millions, millions of jobs that they haven't done. Just like, just like mine, and I think the government needs to seize control of the DVLA, fire all the top staff, and uh, possibly, could we have some Saudi Arabian style public floggings? I would, I would like that. Well, we know that one aspect of the truckers issue of not getting goods around the country was a lack of new licenses going to newly qualified drivers. There we go. So it was actually an infrastructural problem too. Yeah. Huge headache for the country, yep. not good. Not a good news story. This one in Saturday's Metro, school dinners. Leo, tell me more. 
So, a school has been criticised for serving children food so bad, they're going hungry. So, uh, they, they charge £2.60 a meal, which, you know, that's not an insignificant it's back amount. to your meal deal, isn't it? Yeah, that's, I mean, Tesco, if you put 40p more in and you've got a club card, you can get a, a meal deal, you get a chicken club sandwich and uh, a scotch egg, or, or two eggs on their own if you're feeling healthy, in a nice. protein pot, plus a San Pellegrino. Mm. Delicious juice. Oh, look at that. Uh, for little, three pounds. A little glimpse into how the other half live. <laughs> yeah, the, the comedian's dinner. You're on oh. TV now. Things have changed. <laughs> no, I just... Man of the people. Just means I can, buy, I can buy more meal deals whenever I want. But, uh, but yeah, so £2.60. It's not an insignificant amount of money. And they're, they're, for that £2.60, what you get is one sausage, probably not a high-grade sausage, one sausage, one scoop of mash, some carrots and cranberry sauce. Uh, it's 95p for one fish finger, said uh, said a mother called uh, Shelley Webb. That, that 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 sentence could be taken out of context, couldn't it? <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's see if we can get through two more stories in two minutes. How about the Spanish driver oh, in the Guardian? I love What's this he been one. up to? Oh, it's a Spanish driver who ate hash cakes, claims diplomatic immunity from non-existent states. So this man it gets stopped because he's driving erratically. He's got it turns out he's got no MOT. He's smoking, uh, no, so he's eaten marijuana madeleines. Oh, they sound nice, don't they? Um, so and that's a cake with marijuana yeah, yeah, in yeah, it. Yeah, cake with yeah. marijuana mm. in it. He's swerving uh, on the road. He's on his mobile at the same time, and he produces dodgy documents. And then he says, uh, when they ask him for his details, he said, no, um, I, I, I've got um, diplomatic <laughs> immunity from uh, uh, the errant republic of Menda Lorenda. And, and he produces his papers and they're like, and the more that they ask him, like, we don't, just don't talk nonsense, give us this stuff um, that we're asking for, the more he gets angry and then he gets fined. Um, and I, I just I just love that he's he, he's got this... So he didn't get away with it? No. Sometimes I'd like to see criminals get away with it, yeah, just for the chutzpah. Yeah, I mean... that is a Madeleine to the uh, post it's, officers. It's not, a, it's not a crime that really impinges on anybody else. And also, I mean, you've got to, yeah, you've got to admire somebody who is accused of taking drugs. And to get out of it, they say they're from the Errant Republic of Menda Lorenda. That's, that's uh, a great, I want to be part yeah, of that republic. That's, that's a sentence that <laughs> says, got, I am definitely on drugs. He has got cajones of steel. <laughs> um, by the way, Marks and Spencers, I'm sure they'll be doing these uh, marijuana Florentines at some point, won't yeah. they? <laughs> uh, these little cakes. Madelines. And Madelines, that's the word. Madeline. There you go, of course, we, uh, we jest. Now, a uh, couple of seconds. Tell me about this story. It's our last story, Leo. And it's about the world's most boring man. So the, a team at Essex University are doing the important work. They found that the most boring man is a data analytics worker who likes sleeping and watching TV. So they've done a lifestyle study to find the most boring traits. But what a pointless study. Can you believe we don't have a proper working, functional missile defence system in this country? So Russia can nuke us at any moment. But our scientists are busy working out who's most boring. Come on, get your priorities straight. <laughs> yeah, on the get plus side, we all belong to the performing arts, which is the most exciting career to have, and probably have the most boring hobby because all of us like to sleep because we keep. Can you hours. do a story, Sajila, in one sentence? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Afghan drug smugglers using uh, slingshots to smuggle drug over to Iran. How cool is that? More ingenuity. Yeah, that is amazing. That's chutzpah. That's been a theme of the show. Uh, and she did it in a sentence. We've had a lot of very fabulous sentences from both Sajila Kershi and Leo Kirst. Thank you so much for your uh, brilliant input tonight. They will return very soon. Bye. They are the Harlem Globetrotters of headliners. Premium talent, that's what they'd call it. And, uh, of course, I'm back in the hot seat tomorrow from 11. We're here every night at 11, um, bringing you tomorrow's papers with hopefully a smile where possible. I'll be back in the hot seat for Mark Dolan tonight at nine, plus headliners. I'll see you then. Hello there, I'm Eamon Holmes. And I'm Isabel Webster. And we hope you can join us for... Breakfast with Eamon. And Isabel. You make me laugh out loud, belly laugh. Is that important first thing in the morning? Yeah, absolutely. And there's me trying to be deadly serious. <laughs> News is a serious business. Yeah, I have to rein you in sometimes. Well, it doesn't stop us laughing at it. It doesn't stop us having an opinion on what's going on. Yeah. And it certainly will not stop us reflecting what you think. Weekdays from 6 to half past 9 on GB News. My name's Tom Harwood, and every weekday we bring you The Briefing live from 9.30am. The stories, analysis and live debate that you need to hear. 
quite right, uh, uh, Tom, of, of course. Was this something that had been considered at all? Difficult to answer. Gas guzzling helicopters circling. Noise is being made here. Joe Biden walking out. Thank you very much for joining us. Don't miss it. The Briefing with me, Tom Harwood, Monday to Friday, 9.30 a.m. on GB News. GB News is the UK's home of discussion and debate from all perspectives. To stay up to date on the latest stories, make sure that you subscribe to the GB News channel right here on YouTube. You can watch us live 24-7 across the whole world. You can also check out exclusive content and catch up on previous episodes of your favourite shows. Every day, we ask the questions that you dare. So why not add your voice to the conversation in the comments section? Don't forget to subscribe. We are GB News, Britain's news channel. Every night at 11 on GB News, we bring you the next day's stories the day before. It's basically like time travel. If it's a big story, we'll cover it, guaranteed. But we'll also have some fun along the way. Big opinions, big laughs. Sometimes, big hair. This is Headliners, Headliners the paper review show that won't send you to sleep like the others will. 11 p.m., seven nights a week. Join us. Hello there, I'm Eamon Holmes. And I'm Isabel Webster. And we hope you can join us for... Breakfast with Eamon. And Isabel. You make me laugh, 